The painkiller that became a killer. The Tylenol Crisis In 1982, when people reached for a pill bottle, they expected relief. Not a game of Russian roulette. But that's precisely what they got. Enter Tylenol, the innocent-looking painkiller, which would soon harbor a deadly secret. Tylenol wasn't just a random player in the world of pain relief. It was the player. Accounting for a whopping 35% of the over-the-counter painkiller market in the U.S., it's safe to say that Tylenol had more fans than most rock bands at that time. Small Pill Big Relief While aspirin was off somewhere, potentially causing stomach ulcers, and ibuprofen was keeping a tab of your kidney functions, Tylenol played it cool. The mice guy in the toxic world of pain relief. Johnson & Johnson the proud parent company of Tylenol must have been patting themselves on the back for crafting a brand so successful that it was practically a household verb. Got a headache? Just Tylenol it away. The rise of Tylenol wasn't an overnight Cinderella story. It had its roots in science. For those nodding off in high school chemistry, Tylenol's star ingredient was acetaminophen. While aspirin was playing the field, causing stomach upsets and occasionally flirting with allergic reactions, acetaminophen was the dependable, side effect minimizing sweetheart everyone wanted to take home. Comparatively, its competitors were playing catch up. And I mean, seriously trailing behind. If this were a school race, Tylenol was the athletic kid sprinting ahead, while the rest were tripping over their shoelaces and arguing about who pushed whom. The numbers spoke for themselves. Tylenol was not just a market leader. It was the market leader. Behind closed doors, inside the suburban homes, there was anxiety. On the streets of Chicago, there was palpable fear. Tylenol, from being the solution, was suddenly the problem. A trusted friend had seemingly betrayed an entire nation. The early signs of the looming crisis, in hindsight, were whispers in the wind. It began not with a bang, but with a quiet rustling of discomfort. Initially, it was a suspicion, a hush-hush rumor. The kind your aunt might have whispered about over a fence with the neighbor. Murmurs of tainted Tylenol bottles began to surface. But who would poison painkillers, right? Surely, it had to be some urban legend. Perhaps another Bigfoot sighting or a modern retelling of the boogeyman. Or so many hope. But like all tales where things seem too good to be true, there's always that plot twist. Seven souls in the Chicago area would pay the ultimate price for seeking relief. Little did Mary Kellerman, a 12-year-old, know that her morning routine would turn fatal. And Adam Janus, the 27-year-old, would unknowingly be part of a domino effect that saw his brother and sister-in-law fall victim to the same fate. The investigative cogs began to turn at rapid speed. The police, the FBI, even the Food and Drug Administration, they all jumped into the fray, desperately trying to piece together this morbid jigsaw puzzle. The horror, it seemed, was methodically calculated. Certain bottles from certain batches had been tampered with turning Tylenol from a savior to a silent reaper. Now, just to set the record straight and cut through the sensationalism, this wasn't just a case of a bad batch. No, this was deliberate, cold-blooded tampering. The capsules weren't just off. 
they were laced with cyanide, turning what should have been a source of relief into a lethal weapon. But how? Was it a disgruntled employee? A psychopath with a vendetta? A competitor looking to tarnish the Tylenol Titan? Conspiracy theories ran wilder than kids in a candy store. And as they did, the nation watched with bated breath. Their trust in consumer goods eroding faster than a skin castle at high tide. In the midst of this chaotic web, McNeil Consumer Healthcare, a subsidiary of Johnson & Johnson and the makers of Tylenol, found themselves facing the biggest PR nightmare since New Coal. From being the market leader to the lead suspect in a national crisis, it was quite the fall from grace. Yet, despite the extensive manhunt and investigations, the mastermind behind this dark plot remained as elusive as a cat meme without a sarcastic caption. The true identity of the person or persons responsible became one of the great unsolved mysteries of the 20th century. In the wake of the cyanide revelations, the mood in America was palpably tense. You could almost hear a pin drop if not for the incessant media coverage that kept everyone on tenter hooks. Tylenol, which once graced our medicine cabinets as a trusted ally, had been thrown under the proverbial bus. And honestly, who could blame the public? Now, in a situation replete with life-threatening pills, it's tempting to think there'd be immediate legal consequences like massive fines, stern reprimands, or the key players being hauled off in handcuffs. Right. Wrong. The case, like a second-hand jigsaw puzzle from a garage sale, was missing crucial pieces. Johnson & Johnson, Tylenol's parent company, wasn't directly at fault here and pinning the blame became as challenging as understanding quantum physics after a night out on the town. Johnson & Johnson, instead of spiraling into corporate hysteria, displayed commendable agility and accountability. They promptly initiated a nationwide recall of Tylenol products. Just picture that for a second. 31 million bottles worth over $100 million pulled off the shelves. It's like recalling every slice of pepperoni pizza ever made because one might have had too much oregano. After the stormy affair, Tylenol had a mountain decline. By January 1983, only a few months after the disaster, Tylenol's market share was on the rebound, slowly climbing up to 24%. By August 1983, with the introduction of tamper-evident packaging and price promotions, it bounced back to an astonishing 30%. Johnson & Johnson's handling of the crisis became a masterclass in transparency, responsibility, and rebuilding trust. In fact, they did it so well. Some have sarcastically mused they should have added crisis management to their product line. Tylenol's swift introduction of tamper-evident packaging set a precedent. It quickly became an industry standard, not just for medications, but for a wide array of consumer products. So, every time you wrestle with a safety seal on your salad dressing or grumble about the child-proof cap on your vitamins, you know whom to thank or blame. But beyond the corporate world, the Tylenol murders sparked a revolution in product safety. That extra layer of plastic and those do not use if seal is broken warnings. You can thank this tragic episode for those. Inadvertently, the crisis ended up safeguarding future consumers from similar fates. Yet, we must remember, at the heart of this story are the victims. 
individuals who became unsuspecting casualties of a senseless sack. Their memories serve as a solemn reminder of the weighty responsibility companies hold and the dire consequences of when things go terribly wrong. So, the next time you pop open a safety sealed bottle, remember Tylenol's tape. The fragile nature of trust, the lasting impact of integrity, and a stark reminder that sometimes, reality can be more chilling than fiction.